Good morning, everybody, or whatever time of day you're watching this. I think I finally figured out how to get Lo-Fi Chill working in the morning, so, uh, you know, probably open my videos that way. <clears throat> it's good stuff. Okay, we are here uh, on April the 1st. Uh, because of all of the craziness going on, this is the anti-April Fool's Day. Nothing is fooling here. And, um, you know, I would recommend against it. It's just been a little crazy. Uh, you know, I think I think the last two weeks have been already too crazy. So, but it is April the 1st. And today we are, this um, lesson is mostly about the traditional kingdom of Congo and reading those notes. I promised you a lesson. And so here it is. <clears throat> I am grading the axum paragraphs, and I just wanted to let you know, I think I've gone through period one, some in period five, some in period seven, even periods haven't gotten you yet. Sorry about it. But this lesson is 15 points formative. That is going to be uh, a very big part of your grade. So if you have not turned it in, um, you have not completed it, please complete it. Some people completed a part of it, didn't finish it. I will give you half credit if you don't finish it, but I'm putting it in a zero right now just to see that you you do get it finished. But it's 15 points formative. The deadline is April 8th for that lesson. Okay. Also, uh, I'm going to be Zooming tomorrow. No Zooms on today, Wednesday the 1st. I will be Zooming tomorrow the 2nd to help you with Traditional Kingdom. And I kind of wanted to make sure that you watched this video before you came into the chat because the Zoom is going to be mostly for uh, small group help, one-on-one -on -one help. The main lessons are these videos. So I'm going to have a password and uh, I'm going to post it on the, the slide stream for right now. And maybe later I'll get maybe a little bit sneakier with it, but I don't want to, I don't want to overburden you too much, but really watch this video before you come to the zoom chat, because I don't want to need to repeat myself too much. I can explain it in different ways, but y'all should really watch this if you, if you want help. So anyway, so I'm going to put a password of April, and when you come into the Zoom chat tomorrow, if you want to, it will again not be mandatory, up to you, but if you come into the Zoom chat, um, you'll need to type in April into the chat, so I know that you know, I know that you have watched this video. Okay, so traditional kingdom, you know, um, I feel like this is the first time I can actually like teach you something that isn't about setting up for all this craziness. So I'm really happy to be here. Um, you know, I'm just going to play a little bit of this uh, video from Dr. Gates. Uh, some of you might have already watched it. Look at these, look at these faces he's making. But anyway, uh, I'm going to close caption and uh, just to see some of the amazingness of the Congo here. No, was one of the largest and most powerful states in the southern half of Africa. From the capital, Mbanza, Congo, a densely settled and well-administered city lying south of the Congo River, a king presided over a highly stratified society that covered some 50,000 square miles. At the heart of the city stand the ruins of a building constructed in the middle of the 16th century. It's one of the most important architectural remains in the history of sub-Saharan African Christianity, a striking symbol of the transformation of the religious beliefs of this great African kingdom. It's the Cathedral of Sao Salvador. What did you think when you first heard that there was an African cathedral in before the 1600? I couldn't believe it. Tell me about it. The cathedral was built in 1549. Mm -hmm. And it's an incredible thing. Think about having a cathedral to fulfill the destiny of Christianity in Africa. Do the people here know about this history? Many of the references say the place was a temple that connected to the old religion. So that would make sense. That makes sense. Uh -huh. The second tale is always the king knew he wanted to be a Christian, and he decided to build <clears throat> this monument mm -hmm. to honor 
this incredible transformation. The adoption of Roman Catholicism by the King of Congo in 1491 not only changed the official religion of the kingdom, but it inserted Congo into the very heart of European power. At the beginning of the 17th century, a summary of world rulers prepared in Florence for the education of Prince Cosimo de' Medici listed the leaders of the world's great kingdoms alongside the monarchs of such great powers as England, France, Japan, and China was King Alvaro II, the King of Congo, the ruler of a power. I'm going to stop there. And uh, you can see there's only a few more seconds there, but I wanted to move on. But you saw some of the uh, African kingdom convert. Let me get this. You saw some of the uh, visuals of the natural features of Congo in that uh, little segment. <laughs> He's giving me face again. You know, um, if we go back here, you know, um, you know this. Look at this landscape right here. Pretty incredible as far as where this is and the kind of land that is in the kingdom. You have the large river. It's very green. Um, this isn't as rainforesty as other parts of the Congo River. Uh, and you can imagine that people could, you know, grow a lot of things, produce a lot of things. This is not a uh, resourceless land. It is not a barren land. It is, it is uh, quite dynamic and uh, a lot of good greenery. Okay, so now we get to what you had for Congo stuff. And I don't know if I gave you any other links. Uh, I think I did. There was one video that you could watch. We're not going to watch that today. But um, you can see here the pictures. Um, this was mostly produced by Ms. Lunsford. So thank you for her. Uh, this picture of, uh, I think this is um, Nzinga. I don't think they mention him here, but he is mentioned in some of the documents in Lesson 33. This is Nzinga, who I believe changes his name to Afonso. So uh, he's looking pretty rad right there, I think, in his, uh, in his cape and his uh, crown and his scepter there. Uh, so we have, you know, and as I, you know, uh, and as I look through this, I see leadership, I see food production, and then I go to the note sheet and this is, you know, some of the note sheet that you need to do. Um, and you kind of just, you kind of, as you read through the sections, you can go through it. Okay. The language, where am I going to see the language? Well, it's not probably going to be in climate and geography. Language is something that populations have. So, um, you know, it's probably gonna be there. And look at this, the population of the Congo kingdom descended from Bantu speaking farmers. So Bantu is the language. Geographic features, you know, when I see that, um, you know, obviously I remember, oh yeah, there was climate and geography. So I went back there. And as you read through this, you can get three basic facts from that. So um, I think the organizer is um, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Maybe some of you got the notes of what I already have from there. That's okay. I'm not mad at that. That's a completion grade. But now we come to the exit ticket questions. Now, these exit ticket questions, I am going to post on a Google form connected to this video. And this is what you got to answer. So what I'm going to do is highlight this in yellow, how I'm going to answer this one and highlight this in, uh, I want to do a nice, uh, I want to do a nice, uh, like purple, pink, purplish color. Okay. All right. That's a pretty, I don't want to do red, you know, red's a little, nah, I don't want to do red. Okay. So how does location geography of the Congo kingdom help its economy? Mm. Oh man, that is a great question. And what I can kind of see with this information here, and by the way, you're welcome to follow along on your notes um, because you have these notes. Uh, I see architecture. That's probably not about geography and economy. I see religion. No, probably not. I see, oh, trade and industry. Now, trade has to do with the economy, right? So, um, 
What I would say is here's a lot of goods that are talked about here. And I'm kind of thinking, hmm, how does, um, how, you know, what I see here is a lot of things that probably came from the land, right? Like a lot of these goods came from the land. And could I imagine that shells might be used as money when I think about what the geography is like? I think that's a pretty good, reasonable connection. And I don't want to give you the full answer here. I want you to flesh it out. But that might be a thing uh, for trade and industry that might answer that question. Um, oh, and I see here food production. Now, food is officially food is part of the economy. People need to buy food. If you're not buying food, you're making your own food. That's time. Time is money. That's a lot of economy stuff. So, you know, and I can kind of see here, I can already see in the readings here of things that are about, you know, how the things from the land produce food for people to trade. And that's what people are going to do, right? Like if I'm growing food in one place and somebody else is growing food in another place, we're eventually going to trade that. So I think those two sections are going to give you your answer for question one, and you should answer that in about two to three sentences. My clock is dinging. It's 10 o'clock. So there you go. Okay, let's, uh, let's go back down to the second question here. Again, these questions aren't on the organizer. Um, you could answer them here. You could answer them on the organizer. But like I said, I'm going to post a Google form for you to answer these questions. Okay. How does the social structure in the Congo Kingdom allow its political leaders to remain powerful? Mm. Okay. So now I'm going to go back through my notes and see if I can find something either about social structure or the political part of the Congo. Okay. Architecture, nope. Religion, nope. Trade industry, food production, nope. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Oh, leadership. Now that is about, uh, political stuff. So I might uh, look at this section. Uh, and I'm, I'm really trying to see, does it say uh, something, does it talk about the social structure at all uh, when it talks about leadership? And if it doesn't talk about social structure, then I shouldn't use this. So I see it's about the king. I see about these taxes. Okay. Um, now, could I, could I discuss that, you know, when I talk about provincial governors, could that be social? Maybe, maybe. I, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to kind of stick, you know, just stick a pin, well, not actually in my head, but metaphorically in there. And then if I look at population, uh, could that be about social structure? Sure, absolutely. And and now I see in population, oh, social classes within the kingdom are rigidly defined. And I'm that might that's actually a pretty good um, that's a pretty good indicator that I'm going to find the answer maybe in this section. So so that kind of helps you focus a little bit on the note sheet. That's what I see from the note uh, from the notes in order to answer the exit ticket. So, um, so that is the end of my lesson here, as far as that is concerned. And I hope you can kind of see through my, I'm not going to share this out with you. This is just, so you can see in the video that the yellows help with question one, the pinks help with question two. Um, you know, as you go back through this video, you could follow along and do that. And then, um, I'm going to post the Google form. Uh, for you to answer these questions and you are done then lesson 32. So once you get done the organizer and the questions and the and the um, and the uh, exit ticket, you are done with lesson 32. Congratulations. There will not be a video tomorrow. I'm just gonna zoom tomorrow. Um, keep uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, I'll post uh, some times. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna post a time right now. So I'm going to say that um, uh, that uh, Zoom tomorrow, uh, this is for traditional Congo. Um, and let's put it at like 12.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. 
And um, I'm going to provide, let's see, I think I'm going to provide a sign up for that. So I'll probably, um, I'm probably, and I think I'm going to put uh, post that sign up tomorrow. And uh, basically, the reason I want to do a sign up is so that I don't get an overwhelming crush of people at 1230 um, for people for to ask for help. Um, and so I can space that out. Now, if you have another teacher teaching in the afternoon or giving office hours in the afternoon, check that out. We still don't have a set up schedule yet, I don't believe. And we are here to help you out. So don't freak out if you can't. And I will say, um, you can always email me too. You don't have to come to the Zoom and and, uh, and get, up, get help one-on-one. Uh, -on -one you know, through video chat, I can email you as well. Okay. And this is just traditional kingdom. I'm going to go to the diffused culture on Friday um, and probably provide some kind of office hours for that as well. Uh, and the zoom is not really too much of a hangout time. It's more to, to get some help um, and maybe even to work with your peers on it. We'll see. Okay. So that is traditional kingdom of Congo. I just wanted to say that you guys are amazing. I've gotten so many emails from people. I hope you're not too stressed out about this. It is different, and we're we're gonna have a we're gonna have um, an educational time. And but the most important thing is that you stay safe and healthy. And it's great to be in contact with you. And uh, keep looking for posts on the stream, and I'll get back to you uh, tomorrow with some Zooming. Uh, Google Form will be posted this morning as well. If you get that done, if you're ready to answer the question and just get it done, that's great. If you need more help, come to Zoom tomorrow. Thanks, guys, and have a great day.